So if we think about this new collaborative world, we can't afford to be all things to all people anymore. We have to work in networks. We must work in this new way. And so what does that mean to us? Well, I think we think maybe about thinking in a distributed way. As we imagine this ecosystem at uh, the New Business Models for News Project, we're trying to look at four layers. One is the hyperlocal site. Whether that hyperlocal site is a single proprietor like BaristaNet, or whether it is owned by an institution like the New York Times, The Local, or whether it's owned by a startup like Patch, which was just bought by AOL, we want to investigate how to optimize their business. We are finding in our early surveys some hyperlocal bloggers who are bringing in anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 a year in a market of 25 to 35,000 people. Now, you start to hear that, and I think you start to say, oh, man, then maybe there is a job for me, or maybe there's a company for me, or maybe something I own and do. Um, but that alone won't do it because those are isolated. I think that in the marketplace, we have to find ways to help people sell across each other, cooperate in their content and promotion, cooperate in the collaboration and, and, and efforts. There'll still be a news organization, I believe. It won't be as big. It simply will not be as big because it will specialize, it will have new efficiency, it can work collaboratively with this network. Um, collaboration. This man you cannot see is named Kai Diekmann. He's the editor of Bild, which is the gigantic tabloid. It's actually big paper, but it's tabloid in spirit in Germany. And you all know the flip camera, right? <coughs> right. So I saw him, Kai, a year and a half ago, and you couldn't get the flip in Europe at the time. Kai turned all of Germany into paparazzi because he gave them an MMS number, 1414, and said, when you see a celebrity doing something, send it in. And if we like it, we'll pay 500 euro. No celebrity is safe in Germany. <laughs> so I said to Kai, when I saw Kai, you should be doing video. Oh, yes, we are. We're working with Nokia. I said, that's great, but Nokia is expensive and a little hard. You know, have you seen this? And I pulled my flip. He lunged for it. I must have them. I must have thousands of them. And indeed, he sent uh, employees here in New York to Best Buy the next day to buy some. Well, I saw him a year later, and I said, Kai, what are you doing with video? He said, well, and you can't see it there, but he's pointing up. We created our own camera, the Vado. He went to Creative, and he had a licensed version of the flip created. Uh, the, it, it's, it's defaulted to send video directly to Built. In four weeks, they sold 21,000 of them. Now, look at his attitude. When I've shown the flip to most people in our industry, their response is, oh, good, a cheap camera for our staff. Always thinking internally. Not Kai. Kai said, I want to equip Germany because it's good for me. He created a network. And by the way, he made money doing it. He's a smart guy. So if you think collaboratively, your reflex is different. You do things differently. You enable people to do stuff. You create networks and platforms like Google to help them do what they want to do. Quick story. Uh, I'm accused in my book of name dropping, and I do that. But worse, I place drop. I mention Davos too often. So when I saw Kai Diekman, it was at Davos. The next story I'm going to tell you is from Davos. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook was there, and he was addressing a room like this of media moguls. And one of the, it's off the record there, but I asked Mark whether I could quote him, and he said, fine. I did not ask the gentleman uh, who was questioning him, who's the scion of a major publishing company, who's your boss next door. I didn't, I don't want to say who it is. And so here's this incredibly powerful, important person is begging Mark for advice. Mark, how do we get a community like you? We should be able to own and build a community like you. Tell me how. That was embarrassing. And Zuckerberg had a two-word response to this impassioned plea. You can't. Full stop, geeky stare. Right? <laughs> and he came back later, though, and he said, you're asking the wrong question, Muggles. You should be asking, well, you don't create communities. Communities already exist. They're already doing what they want to do. The question you should be asking is, how do you help them do what they want to do better? And his prescription for that was that you bring them elegant organization. Isn't that wonderful? Elegant organization. You think about it, that's what journalism has always tried to do and done well. We help a community organize its knowledge so it can organize itself. But now there's all kinds of new tools to do that, like the Vado. The camera? It's in my, it's in my uh, uh, not, not the Vado, no, I have the flip upstairs. We have, well, we're getting more flips soon. Uh, Sadeep has a whole bunch for his project. Um, so, so, you know, you think about the way these tools operate, the notion of being the mojo, of being out there in the field, I'm going to keep going with that, uh, changes what we do. So, so the, 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 the roles for us as journalists, I'd like to talk about this with you 
a fair amount. I think that the, all of this means that it changes our roles in the world. We still report, absolutely. That is our primary value. But we also have other roles in this new ecosystem, ways we add value to this ecosystem. We have to ask ourselves how we add value because it's not presumed anymore that we have value just because we are who we are. So I think one way is that we aggregate. We find the best. We curate. I use that word, overuse that word these days. Um, we find the best content. We find the best people. But we also, um, we, we organize people. At, our students here are working with the local at the Times. And uh, the Times, you all know about the local, uh, uh, three towns in New Jersey, two neighborhoods in New York, uh, and, and the Times' goal here, as they've said it, is to create the means for the community to report on itself, to create a platform. Because they know it doesn't scale. The Times doesn't cover every town in New Jersey. Never has, never will. Certainly won't now. But how can it create a platform, thinking like a network, thinking collaboratively to help people do this? So when you think that way, our students come in and they went to, the Times went to Reflex and our students went to Reflex. Times Reflex is, I want to edit everything to be like the Times. The students' Reflex it was, I want to pitch stories to the editor of the Times. And some of these were working with them far more than I have, and I can tell you more about it. But what the real role was is to have the students help the community report on itself. So they become community organizers. And that's a loaded phrase, but it really is important. And note the Times about three weeks ago put out a blog post in the local asking a member of the community who wants to cover this meeting tonight. It's a beautiful moment, I think. That was, a, that was the Times opening up in a way that I didn't, wouldn't have thought possible a few years ago. So in that process, we also become educators. The fact that we as journalists become educators about journalism, we've never been terribly generous about how we do things. We're generous with our knowledge, what we learn. But we're not with how we do things. And we now have to help other people do it well. Our response to somebody doing it badly in a blog was for years to dismiss them. Ugh, amateurs. We can't afford that response anymore. Our response in the future must be to say, let's help you do this better if you care to. 